I'm ready. Take me. Not that way! Not that way! What's in a name? Sure, it's a bad pun made by someone who was looking at college as that next big step, but that doesn't necessarily mean that- Once in a generation, a leader comes forth with the power to change the world forever. I look like a face! If you were to see me on the street, you'd say, that guy looks like a face! Because I have a face? DJ! 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 Shut up! That's just you saying DJ! 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 Did you honestly think that was going to work? <laughs> I give you full marks for bravery. Don't be a fool. No. No, no. I'm done. This experiment is over. Do that again and uh, you're going to be stuck in a time loop for Cabin Boy. You're mean. Regret. It's something we've all experienced at one point or another to varying degrees and Sometimes regret is smothering. You can't get away from the fact that you've done or experienced something that has changed you in some deep way. There's always risk of regret whenever taking on any big adventure. Whenever being shown something new and, and wholly unknown to you for the first time. That's what I thought I would get after reviewing that tape. That haunting presence, not only over my life, but over many people's lives. I didn't realize this when I first watched it. This is not only a burden for me, it's a burden for the man who made it. Garrett Gilchrist, the man who was behind a lot of different films, a lot of different features he made when he was exceptionally young. I mean, he... He charged forward so bravely into doing exactly what he wanted to do. He, he went to film school, he made several different short films and various different features, many of which you can see on his YouTube account. And he's still creating today. He does not stand by what was majorly featured on that tape. And I agree with him. No one should see it. It's not worth seeing. When he put it in context, it made it so vividly clear. That first bit that you heard was actually a preview for Radio Man. Radio Man is a series which he still does to this 
day. Last update was about a year and a half ago, as far as I saw. But it's a comment. It's a man sitting at a piano who can't really play piano, who is just shouting insanity out into the world. And that's who he is. He's just being himself. This Radio Man persona is just one man and a camera in a room recording whatever he feels like because he is a Radio Man because he is on the radio. It's horrendously stupid, but it's meant to be. He's expressing everything that is inside of himself at all times. It is a metaphor, actually, before there was YouTube, of what YouTube has become. People just sitting in front of cameras, explaining everything that they feel in reaction to many different things. And, and in that way, it was absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> oh, I feel like I'm getting Stockholm Syndrome, but... The more I spoke with Mr. Gilchrist, the more I understood that he really does get exactly why this film shouldn't ever be shown. And that's why I'm... I'm gonna go on record as saying that Excalibur is as it was meant to be. A stupid, cheaply made film. That, that was his intent. It was never meant to be seen by anyone. The fact that I have it is an entire fluke. It should have never occurred. And he said several times to me, if I dare to even mention or show any of the footage, that I am not only hurting the people involved, who have moved on from their lives since then, I am also personally attacking him. Because it's not a true representation of what he's capable of. He just happened to have it at a film festival with some friends that he trusted, and someone walked in at this film festival and said, Oh, I liked this. Could I get a copy? And that copy happened to work its way around the world and end up in my hands. It's... <laughs> it is an astronomical event that I even saw this film, which I really, really, really regretted when I first witnessed it. Oh, the second preview. Sorry. First was Radio Man. Exactly what you'd expect it would be. Second one is a preview for Gods of Los Angeles. It starts off a little cheesy, but you can actually see clips of that again on his channel. And it builds up to something that I wish I, I just sat down and watched the entire film because it seems like it has great ideas absolutely fantastic ones, that explores the deep-seated nature of human connection. But the preview just doesn't do it justice. It leaves you wondering, wow, that seems like it could be incredible, but why? Why is it... why is... why? You don't get the connection. The dots don't click. That was one he was making actually after the Excalibur. I keep coming back to it, because, let's face it, that's a lot of the reason why you all are here. And no, I'm not going to show any footage from it, because it doesn't deserve to be shown. It's not meant to be. It was not test screened, it was not, it was not designed to be put in front of an audience, it was simply made with his friends. People that he went back to and, and connected with one last summer before everyone went off into their own separate lives. One of those last hurrahs you have before adulthood fully takes hold. He just did it in the best medium he knew how. And that's what he does with all of his work. The Journey of True Song is actually a short film that follows these previews. It doesn't feel like a short film. It feels like a Cliff Notes version of a larger film. It's about the only critique I have against it, otherwise it once again showcases a raw emotion, a, a deep want of connection between two people, and this notion that love and this connectedness is above all most important. A running theme, actually, when I think about it, of his youth, of all youths, we're, we're all at that point in time destined 
in our minds to find someone else, to, to be connected with another in a way that, that strengthens both and makes everyone more solid. That even life and death don't matter because you found that connection with one other person. And then came the main event, which I will say, Excalibur does start with a disclaimer that is totally accurate. It says, once upon a waste of time. That's all it was. He went into it knowing exactly what it was going to be. Imagine if you had a, a play group when you were a kid. The kids you hung out with and said, hey, I'm going to play the swordsman. No, I'm going to play the wizard. I'm going to be the bad guy. And you're chasing each other around, and it's just amazing fun, and you're not thinking about how this works out as a plot. You're just enjoying being there. That's Excalibur. To think a film version of that, made with high school humor in mind. It is the epitome of playing with your friends. And, and watching it as someone who wasn't there, you're not going to enjoy it as much. It was meant for those people who were in the moment. It was fun. And it was done. And no one should ever see it outside of those who saw, who saw it and portrayed any part of it. It's time is done. And the memorable sections are, are very few. There's some parts that stick out in my mind, but all in all, it, it was a very private film. It was never meant to be shown anywhere, so I'm not going to show it. But I do have one regret in all this. After the main film, which the main film, when I first saw it, I. After the credits, I thought, what possibly could there be after this? And I saw 17 minutes of the best short film I've ever seen. I, it struck me. It struck a chord deep inside of me because it is about a creator who, in the middle of one of his creations, suffers a massive coronary incident. And then him dealing with the fact that he might be dying and staving off death as long as he can. Talking with the angel in the room, the ghosts of his past, even the fans of his work, and trying to put his head around what the entire purpose of his life was. It's called Stripped Away, once again. Mr. Gilchrist still has that on his channel. He doesn't want me speaking about it. In fact, this video will probably be torn down shortly after I put it up, or my channel completely deleted. But when something strikes you this hard and true, it's it's really hard not to just share that with the world. He still has a presence. One of his videos has 2.5 million views. It's shamelessly She-Hulk, something he made after the fact. And he still stands behind the work he's done since 2005. He's an artist, you can support him on Patreon, and the one thing you can't talk about is the one thing people dig at. The one thing that bad movie reviewers are out there trying to grab at, because all they want is something to, to lambast, something to attack, something to tear down, to make themselves bigger. And I've never wanted that. I went into this. I went into this show almost two years ago, with the intent of intellectualizing and taking something to the next level. But that was never allowed. I've been forced by circumstances surrounding me to becoming this angry, bitter reviewer before you. And that's not what I ever wanted to be. We don't want this. I would love to just sit here and show you footage of Stripped Away, but there's no need. It's already out there. And it is a beautiful story. In fact, when I told Mr. Gilchrist, oh, this is the reason why 
I wanted to do this in the first place. Why, why talking about this tape actually gave me some excitement. It's because of this one film. He said, please, make your own. That was my story. You have no right to ride along. Make your own film. Well, guess what we're doing? Every one of us just sit here and spell out everything that comes from our souls. We're trying. We have no other means. Everyone tries. Everyone tries to do something, or they don't. And not trying is just so, so appealing some days. And there were times where I was just saying, you know, let's give up. Let's run away from this. Let's, let's do something else. This is not my world to actually change my mind. When I looked, Garrett Gilchrist made another short film called This Is Not My World, where he laments everything he's learned since turning 30. And let me tell you, it's bitter, but honest. There's really nothing that was promised to us that's come true. But the world doesn't really promise us anything. There's a construct and a belief in our heads when we're kids of exactly how things should be. But now all I'm doing is paraphrasing exactly what he said. I'm not trying to ride. I'm trying to say I agree, and I think more people should see his work. And I wish I could show you some. He also told me, <laughs> quite, quite bluntly, do you, do you know what it's like to be 18 and creating something? Do you know what it's like to have something from 12 years in your past lingering over you, taunting you? When I was 18, I published a book of poetry. You can actually still find it on Amazon.com. It is 75% amateur and awful. And if someone walks up to me today and says, hey, I actually found a copy of your book, it was terrible. I'll say, oh, oh, really? What did you think? And I want their feedback. That's a difference. Not every creator is the same, but even though it's something that I look back on and say it was embarrassing. It was, it was a poetry book that I never thought would actually get made, and there it was, in the, in the print. I know what it's like to have an embarrassing past. I know what it's like to be pigeonholed. People do that with reviewers. They think we're all out for blood. We're all out just to yell at something, just to tear it apart when all we really want, all I really want, is that beautiful gem in a cardboard box. Find something gorgeous where no one else thought to look. And I, when I finally found it, when I finally discovered something worth talking about, and all the crap I've been forced to watch, I'm not allowed to say a thing. I respect his words. I think more people should Go see his things. Just never ask about Excalibur because there's no point in pursuing that further. It is exactly what it was meant to be. Forgotten. Buried. And unmarked. I, I really don't know why. I really don't know why TM would force me to watch this when all it would do is tear me apart. Maybe that's always been his plan. <laughs> Go see Garrett Gilchrist's channel. There's gonna be a lot of different links there. Enjoy what you see. If you don't, remember we're all just out there trying to make something. And sometimes it's a success. Sometimes it's just meant for us. 
and I need to go find what's mine.